All right, so it's exactly 1 p.m. on Sunday, and for the last five Sundays, exactly 1 p.m. Exactly 1 p.m. I started. So um, let that be a lesson for you. If you set your time to study, start exactly this trend uh, in your studying, right? always be disciplined in your studying set good habits and we will see good re results when the time comes so without any sort of big talk press like on the video share it with all your friends in the whatsapp group in your school whatsapp group and tell them let me go and get disciplined and study today let me go right in figures 576 thousand so 576 thousand and twelve right in figures this is figures so we off to a good start we off to a good start and rochelle agrees with me state the value of the underlying digit in the following numeral this is ones tens hundreds thousands um so the value of the digit itself the value of that digit itself is what Kamini is saying here, it's 9,000 or 9,000. It's not thousands. The value of the digits itself is 9,000. The place value is thousands. What is the smallest number? The smallest even number that can be formed using, using the smallest even number that can be formed using the digits well i would want to use the biggest even number at the end so i want it to end in eight so i can use the smaller one earlier in values that have higher value right um and i will start with one of course the smallest even number then i'll go two because that's the next number and then i'll go five one two five eight you can't get a smaller even number than that using those and rochelle has got it again and career on the inside big up to everybody who was here from the first session and you're in this session let's see if we can make it all the way to the 12 sessions we are at the halfway mark we are at the halfway mark and it feel like just the other day we started and look at that we are the halfway mark already wrong 9482 to the nearest hundred so ajani has the right idea here we're going to look at the hundreds and then very quickly look at the tens. The tens, this number is eight and it's greater than five. So it means we had to give this one the boost. Give him the boost. Nine, four, and one is five, zero, zero. And that's how we do it. When we divide in, we can do a bunch of different things. There are a bunch of different ways we can approach this question. Thank you for your answer, Ryan. There are a bunch of different ways we can approach this question. For example, we can move back the decimal point of this once and then move back the decimal point of this twice. But since I move this twice, I'll carry this twice as well. And I will end up with 2560 divided by 8, which will give me the same answer, and which isn't too bad to do. So that is the way I recommend people to do this. And most students will do it this way, 2560. Um, notice how I usually go to short division when given the chance or I go to reducing methods short division or reducing methods now it can go into two so this will definitely fall uh, drop a zero here so we can ignore that but it could go into 25 three times remain that one it can go into 16 one six it can go into 16 two times uh it can go into zero so just for, have that um following zero um trailing zero just drop like that oops so the answer is three two zero wait three three Eight divided by, yeah, I've seen some people saying 3.2. 3.2 is not the answer. Um, the answer is 3 to 0. Actually, when you divide, you just take that answer straight there. You just take the answer straight there. You don't need to carry back the points anymore. So like when we multiply and remove the points, when we get the answer, we need to bring back the points. When you're dividing, and once you move the points, the same amount on each one, like this. One, two, so this turns to that, and one, two, and this turns to eight. Remember that you don't need to move back the points. Don't move back points. 
Eh? See, some of you moving back the points there, but you don't touch it. Don't touch it. Treat as a percentage. Now, most people don't know this offhand. 3.75, 37.5%. Let's just take a quick look at the eights family again. One eight, two eight, three eight. This is something you need to memorize. Rate out of 10, how good you have this memorized. At this stage, it should be 10 out of 10. If not, go and study it today. Study it today, 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 today. You have to study that. So that's the eights family as a fraction and as a decimal. Or even if it's out of a thousand, you can think of it like 0 0.125 or 125 out of a thousand. 0 0.250, 0 0.375, 0 0.500. 0 0. Of course, these zeros not needed, but I'm just putting them for cakes. 0 0.625, 0 0.750, 0 0.875, and 1. 1.000. 0 0. And as a percentage, you'll just need to shift it across a little bit. 12.5% is 1 8. 25% is 2 8, also known as a quarter. 3 8 is 37.5%, which is what we wanted. This is a half, which is 50%. This is 62.5%. This 6 8 is 3 quarter, and everybody knows 3 quarter is 75%. Then we have 87.5% and 100%, um, of course. So 37.5% or 37.5% could work here. Now, if you have 37.5%, that will also work, right? Um, just a second. Uh, how much people do you have, right? We're reaching close to the 500. We're doing well. So you all know what to do. Um, y'all, it's five eights. Did I put five or six somewhere? Oh, five or eight. Oh, that's six sneaky name, boy. Wait, let's see that six sneaky name. Yeah, sometimes when you're teaching and you're talking, your mind is skip, skip beats. <laughs> Every ninth shopper at the newly opened supermarket receives a discount. Every ninth shopper receives a discount. So you, you, it mean you had to stand up by that store and wait for eight people to go in and then run in and be the ninth person. How many discounts were given on Tuesday if there were 76 shoppers? Well, every nine shopper will get a discount. So this is just divide by nine. So how many times can nine go into 76? Nine can go into 76 eight times and we're not concerned about the remainder it just means that eight persons would have gotten a discount yeah simple it's just a division <clears throat> square and triangle represents two numbers when i square the numbers when i square the square <laughs> i get 36 so obviously if the square is six square has to be the, the root of 36 you have to go backwards so square is six and six plus something is equal to 11. So obviously it's five, triangle is five because when I add when I add five and six, I get that 11. So yep, that's five. So triangle is five, or I could say 11 minus 11 minus six. All right, so go ahead and write the answer for this one. And let me just check something for real quick. Go ahead and write the answer there. All right, I'm back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Was the answer five? Why well, I'm seeing two different answers. What's the answer for this one? Oh, no, that's the answer from before. What's the answer for this one? So how do you do this? Uh, we have been, for the last five weeks, we have been doing it with this method. We have been in the whole and the fraction method. So let's keep up with this method, right? Whole and fraction, and we'll be like, the whole is five minus two. So this is three. And then we'll be like fraction side, four sevenths minus two thirds. Get our LCM of seven and three, which is 21. 
Seven can go into 21 how many times? Seven can go into 21 three times. Three fours are 12. Three can go into 21 how many times? Three can go into 21 seven times. So seven twos are 14. So we have a little problem here. We're going into negative numbers, 12 minus 14. So we don't do that. What we'll do is say, yo, you see you there? How about I swipe you and take one from you and transport it over here? So if I swiped one, this becomes two. And this one will now change using the denominator here. So instead of writing one, it's like I'm adding on 21 over 21. Right? So 21 plus 12 is 21 plus 12 is 33. 33. Why is somebody saying this is a king? All right. And then 33. So this in instead of instead of seeing instead of seeing this as 12, it's 33 now because I added only 21 here. And 33 minus 14 is King, what's up with this? 33 minus 14. Is 19. So I'm getting 19 over 21. So this is 2 and 19 over 21. Yeah, King. What's up with this? Let me just see why these people are saying so. Shanice and Grace. Grace and Shanice and King. Who are saying so? Uh, King. King, Grace, Shanice, Muffin. All right, you don't understand. You don't understand this one. All right. Well, what I need to do is I need to make some tutorial videos on fractions. If the screen is showing blurry, you'll need to raise the settings on your YouTube. So you go on the gearbox icon in the lower corner and you raise. You say higher quality, or you can pick the resolution. Uh, what else? Anybody else has any questions? Right, so type Y in the chat if your screen is showing really good. Anybody else have any questions? Other than that, I will look at doing some tutorials for this, right? So yeah, remember this is a revision session. So in the revision session, we listen to me, all 500 plus of you here. In the revision session, we go through the exam and we, we run at, uh, not exam piece, a little slower than exam piece. Um, but the individual topics, what I will do, I want to do an individual, in two individual sessions. I want to do a tutorial on fractions and a tutorial on unequal sharing. So we'll spend some time doing fractions and we'll spend some time doing unequal sharing. So look out for that. If it's not this Sunday coming, it's the following Sunday, I will do unequal sharing and the following Sunday, um, fractions and then we will jump back in to um, three more exams so let me just make sure i addressed everyone here who is seen who has a question just give me like two more minutes right guys press like on the video in the meanwhile this is how you raise the quality so you see look everybody's screen is showing really well So anybody else, KJ Gaming, what's up, KJ Gaming? What's up, G KJ Gaming and Kaylee? Oh, y'all oh, are just saying so. All right. From now on, don't say so unless you have a question. So you can just ask your question one time. Right, so I'll put in something to bandy with sir. So if you have a to bandy with sir by itself. So if you have if you have a question, just ask your question right away. Just write your ask your question right away, okay? 
if you keep saying so, 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 you'll end up not being able to write any comments again. So just ask your question right away. Okay, let's go. What's the answer for this one, guys? Back to the book. Um, for this question, you wanted me to check it over. Five minus two, three, four sevens, two thirds, switch to 12 over seven could go into 21, three times three fours are 12, three can go into 21, seven times seven twos are 14, we couldn't subtract, so we borrowed one, 21 and 21. Yes, so we're looking good. We're looking good. We're looking good. 21 and 19. Okay. So we're going forward, and I'm seeing people saying 132 dollars or something like that. In terms of the dollars, how much do we have? 100 plus 31, 131 dollars. When I add 100, 110, and 20, if it's blurry, you need to raise the settings on your side, guys. And in terms of the cents, how much do I have? 50 plus 25 and 25. That's another dollar there. So I already got one dollar so far. 10 plus 5 cents and 5 cents, that's 20 cents. So I'm, I have to add a dollar here, and I have to add on 20 cents. So in the end, I can very easily see this is $132.20. Quick maths, right? Quick, 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 maths. Complete the following sequence. What's happening here? Is it going up by a specific number? 4 and 7 is 3, 7 and 13 is 6, 13 and 20, 13 Four to seven, four plus three makes seven. Why am what am I saying? Four plus three makes seven. Seven plus six will make thirteen. And is it thirteen and nine will make twenty-two? So it seems like it's adding on multiples of three. So next up, I need to add on what? Three, six. I need to add on twelve. And twelve and twenty-two will be thirty-four is our way to go there. Thirty-four is our ticket for the max. So I bought a video game for $350, made a profit of $185 upon reselling. What's the selling price of the video game? Well, if you made a profit, the selling price will be equal to the cost price, how much he paid for it, plus his little profit that he made there, plus the profit. So what you all think is the answer? I'm seeing Rachelle is saying $535, and she's really quick on this. $350 plus $185. 5 and 0 is 5. 8 and 5 is 13. So uh, 13 went like this. The 3 went there. Then 1 come, comes, comes over there. And I have 1 plus 3 plus 1. So that's 5. So $535 is the way to go. So I am seeing one person get timed out for the suit. One person um, wrote so. So if you, have a, if you have a problem, you just need to ask your question one time. Ask your problem, ask your question one time. Because a few people were spamming, so. All right, so the uh, analog clock shown below is 15 minutes ahead of real time. Say the correct time on the digital clock. Oh, well, right now, this time is what? It's past 10, so it's something past 10. How much is it? 25 past 10, 5, 5 is 25. It's 10, 25, but that's not the real time. Because this is 15 minutes ahead. 15 minutes ahead means the clock is fast. It means we need to subtract 15 minutes from this. 10.25 minus 15 minutes is going to be 10.10. 10. So I should expect to see 10.10 10 on the clock right here. Okay. So let's go in number 14. What answers you all get in here? What answers you all get in here? Calculate the perimeter of the rectangle shown below. Calculate the perimeter of the rectangle shown below. Do, 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 do. If you didn't get to see the question, don't worry. It's recorded. You can always swing back and see the previous questions. Have no fear. Remember, don't just type so by yourself like, like what Peaches did there. Ask a question. Ask a question right away. So to calculate the rectangle, we'll have to realize that we have two pairs of equal sides. 
So I can just straight up add up all these sides. The sum of all these sides is going to be 12.6 by 2 plus 4.8 by 2. Or I can add it up all together like this. And everyone is saying that my answer should be 38.4, 4.8. So we're going a little slow today. We're going a little slower than usual. Um, 8 and 8 and 6 and 6 is 14 and 14, which is 28. Uh, 28. When I get 8 and 8, I get 16. Add on the next 6, I get 22. And 6, I get 28. So I'll put 28 here. I'll cross this 8 and put it there. I'll put it 2 there. Uh, let's see if we can catch back our proper speed. So 2, 2, 2, that's 6. And plus 4 would make it 10. 10 and 4 is 14. So that 4 is good there. Four is really good there. Four drops really good there. But a one should come here. One, one, and one makes three. So 34. 34.8 is totally correct. Totally correct. One other method that some people use for perimeter is to add the 12.6 and the 4.8 and then multiply it by two. Length plus breadth multiply by two. I'm seeing a couple of you all use that there, right? Uh, number 15, the light bulb shown below has a mass of. Oh, we crossed the 500. We crossed the 500 today. The light bulb shown below has a mass of 240 grams. What is the mass in kilograms of three identical light bulbs? We just need to multiply by two. We just need to, uh, by three. Why did I say two? <laughs> so we need to say 240 <sighs> times three. So three fours are 12. There's a zero here, though. Three fours are 12. Only one will come here. And three by two is six. So 720. But that's grams, and I'm seeing here like they want it in kilograms. So what do we do? When you want to change the grams, you're going to swing that decimal point three places to the left. Boom, you end up there. So my final answer is 0 0.72, and I can put the zero if I want to. I can leave it out. 0 0.72 kilograms. Very nice. State the length of the lipstick shown below to the nearest centimeter. So we always gain a little rule. I think the player wrong with here. So I'm not sure. If, oh yeah, I'm honestly not sure if this is a little fishy because this one point in here and this one point in here, they're a little fishy, yeah? But let me use, let me use the arrows. Let me use the arrows. So let's say this was 16.1 and this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Something wrong with the scale here. Again, some of these scales are a little fishy. All right, so um, everyone is hearing me. Kaylee Alura Ali said that the audio cut off. So if this is 16.1 and this is 21.5, um, we should have 21.5 minus 16.1. So it seems like everyone is hearing me loud and clear. So... Kaylee, uh, Kaylee is putting a bunch of distracting comments all the time. Kaylee, what's the matter? What's, what's the point of that, those questions? I think I may have stopped for a split second here. Let's see if it resumes. I have no fear. I'm back. Dun, 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 dun. So we get 5.4 when you subtract 5.4 centimeters. So Kaylee, like she prophesied the audio into cutting off. <laughs> 5.4 centimeters looks about it. All right. So let's just put that 5.4 here. Which quadrilateral below has no right angles? I see a right angle there. 
I see a right angle here and here. I'm not too sure. Not too sure. <laughs> Maybe this is a right angle. Maybe. Um, but for sure, there are no right angles here. For sure. And they didn't say which quadrilateral. They say which quadrilateral. So one. So the best answer for sure is C. So what you all think? What do you call that shape that C is? All right, 21.5. Um, now, careful with this, right? Careful with this. Uh, and do let this one, if you get like 5.3 or 5.6, don't worry. Um, the scale with this was a little weird. Um, the scale will be sure for your exam. One from five is four. Let's just bring across this. And oh, 21 minus 16 is five, yeah. So. 5.4 is about the best answer for that one. To, is it to the nearest centimeter? To the nearest centimeter. Oh, if you want to go to the nearest centimeter, then 5.4 to the nearest centimeter would be 5. Yeah. And then we did last piece of my question clearly. And I see now it's frustrating some people here, which is a good thing to see, which is a good point to talk to bring up here. Now, I do not vet any of these questions when I do them. Well, I vet the questions, but I do not do the questions. So, like, I don't actually sit down and run through all the questions in detail before I do them in class. So, I try to, I try as much as possible to let some of the questions be like a surprise to me. So it's basically my team do most of the questions. I may just input in some of the questions and some of the ideas behind the questions and that kind of thing. But the numbers and everything, I want to experience it whilst I'm doing it. So which is why on Sunday you may see me leave out a part of the question or forgot forget that I forget that question last week when last Sunday number eighteen. So it's 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 raw and unedited, and it's also showing you that in mathematics, you can never, ever become good in mathematics if you are afraid of mistakes. So, like, if you're afraid to make a mistake, you can never become good in mathematics if you're afraid of making mistakes, if you are too fearful to make a mistake. To learn to walk, do you know how many times you fell? Ask your parent. Ask your parent if you just go and ask your mother, now, mommy, when I was born, I just jumped out of the hospital and walk home. I know, was I walking one time? No. Fell plenty times, bro. They will tell you no, and they might share pictures of how you used to creep and thing. Because these days, Tyrell cameras, they might share how you used to creep. So, uh, that means that means like proofread and test all the questions in detail and that kind of thing. Now. So, I, I don't proofread and vet and go through every single question. No, after we do the exam, it's when I tweak some of the questions. So, um my encouragement here is this is because i'm speaking to a student recently and a student and a parent and the student is paralyzed do you know what paralyzed mean the student is petrified and paralyzed to make a mistake in front of the teacher they are free are you listen to me are you the kind of student right when the teacher is passing around you know them maths teachers like to pass around in the aisle and and um and you sit down here on your desk and are they doing work and he give some work on the board to do or he or she and everybody doing their work and as soon as the teacher reach by you you kind of cover your book like this and you're writing like this and you don't want the teacher to see you don't want the teacher to see your work you're kind of hiding your work you're very you're very afraid to get things wrong in maths you have to be all the top students get things wrong and get things wrong as fast as possible i encourage you Listen, go on, go on, go on, tell your parents this. I'm encouraging you to get things wrong as fast as possible. The faster you can do more things and get them wrong, 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 is the, is the better you'll get all the wrong out of your system. 
So you need to make all the mistakes you can make now, which is why we'll have you practicing all the practice tests, do all the homework, all the assignments. Practice, 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 do all the homework, do all the assignments, do all the assignments. You need to get all that wrongness out of your system, and you cannot be afraid to get it wrong. Let your teacher see the working. Some of you always write kind of scribbly working, and you know why you're writing the scribbly working? You don't want the teacher to see really what it is you're doing kind of way now, boy. So you're just coming down to the answer. You don't want, to, you don't want the teacher to see the kind of silliness you're writing here. Write your working clear. Let the teacher see all the mistakes. Let the teacher see clearly what's happening. Once the teacher is a decent teacher, they would be able to say, oh, this is the wrong technique that you're using. This is a problem that you have. So do not let mathematics, mathematics is just numbers you know, and operations and things. Do not let mathematics make you feel so shy and afraid that you're afraid of a, a number. You're afraid to get things wrong. Um, if your teacher is roughing you up for getting things wrong, that's bad. And I, I apologize on behalf of your teacher. A teacher shouldn't rough you up for getting things wrong. Now, if it's something that you're being lazy about, <laughs> if it's something that you know you are being lazy about in learning and you're supposed to learn it and you didn't learn it, well, maybe maybe the teacher have a little rights there. But the teacher should be happy that you get something wrong. Ecstatic. Because that's when the that's where the lessons can that's where the lesson can be given. How many times in this Sunday revision session somebody said something, or maybe I made this like I made this mistake here, and now I was able to give an entire lesson that may stay with a lot of you all for a long time. Mm -hmm. So remember that don't let mathematics make you afraid, afraid to get things wrong. All right, you have to get things wrong as fast as possible so you can begin to get them right. Faith was standing facing east. Here's Faith. She's standing facing east. She turned in an anti-clockwise direction and is now facing south. Now, anti-clockwise means opposite the direction of the clock. The clock ticks like this. Tick, 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 tick. So if it was going anti-clockwise, she started facing east and she'd go this way and end up south. Through how many degrees did fade turn? That's clearly 90 plus 90 plus 90, three quarter of 360, which we learned often is 270 degrees. What is the modal shoe size for the following set of shoe sizes? Now, since we already reached question 19, I want to talk a little bit about mode. Y'all, permit me a second to talk about mode, right? I'm coming back to this. Which one is the most popular one here, man? Boom, bang, bang, bang. That's four, five. Five of this. What is this by all these, these things looking confusing? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, it are real sixes. I don't think nobody could be the sixes. The sixes is the mode. Now, I can't tell you all how many times teachers, parents, and students talk to me about mode. Mode is the easier, easiest statistic analysis to talk to, to figure out, but there's one situation that's very tricky. Parents, teachers, I have, I have, they have seen quarrels among teachers about this. You all probably know I'm talking about quarrels around, um, um, among teachers about this, and it's a, it's, a, it's a real problem, and it's unfortunate that it's a big thing because it shouldn't be. And uh, On this side, we'll have something like frequency. On this side, let's say we have, let's say we have ga uh, games, right? And the amount of students who play these games. And call out some of the games that is Roblox, Call of Duty, Minecraft. Uh, Mario, what are other games? PUBG, and give me one other game there. It's how the first game on this call out is Roblox all the time. Apex Legends, right? So Apex Legends. And let me just make up some numbers here. Watch this, people, and tell me if you ever ever see a situation like this and you was just confused on what to do. And they took a survey in your class and see how many students play the games. And there was... 700 roblox 700 minecraft um maybe maybe let's make roblox the most nine with roblox seven uh five with call of duty 700 minecraft um 700 pubg 700 apex legends and five again with mario and they will ask questions and we need to, they need to figure out the mode here and i get these questions in my just this week i got one I got one a few weeks before. I always get this question. Parents keep sending me this question. Or teachers. A teacher sent me it last. And they asked, so which one is the mode? 
um, which one you'd say is the mode. Uh, it depends on what they ask. It depends on what they ask. You all hear what I'm saying? So, in almost all situations, the answer could never be nine. In almost all situations, the answer could never be nine. So it depends on the question, right? If they ask, what is the modal game played? If the question is speaking to the modal game played, then you need to watch this column and see which one has the highest frequency. And the answer for that wouldn't be nine. What do you think the answer will be for that? The answer in this case will be Roblox. Roblox is the modal game played here because it has the highest frequency. So that's one. Now, you notice how the question is phrased. The speaking specifically to this side of the table. What is the modal game played? And you need to watch the highest frequency. And sometimes they don't have the word frequency here. And they will phrase the question like this. So what did I use? A five. And they may have students or number of students, which means frequency as well, of students. And then they will say, what is the mode, the number of students playing, playing or something like that, right? This question is speaking to this side of the table. So now you need to go and see what's the modal number of students. And modal, write this down, write this down, because a lot of people think mode means this. Modal never means highest value. Modal never means highest value. So if you've heard that anywhere before, that's not true. Modal never, not equal to highest value. Do you know what modal means? Modal or mode, mode is, it could only mean highest frequency, frequency is not value, or highest or most occurring. So if you see in the word modal popping up, you can replace it with more, most occurring. Modal doesn't mean the highest actual value. It means the highest actual frequency. Who is coming the most? Who is showing up the most? You understand? It's a different idea. It's a different idea. So if this, the question is asking, what is the modal number of students playing? This is actually saying what is the most occurring that you are seeing in the number of students playing, and that is actually seven. Now, there's this is not settled. This is not settled. Uh, um, I am pretty settled on this, but you can still you you can still have some teachers who may disagree with me on this. Believe it or not, you may still have some teachers who may disagree with me on this. But I am saying more does not mode in mathematics doesn't stand for highest value it stands for highest frequency or most occurring so depending on what the question is asking for you have to look for the most occurring number where students are playing and the most occurring number is seven now if that's the modal game played then you would say roblox you notice how nine is never the answer nine can never be the answer they could either be asking about the modal game played which is roblox or the modal number of students, which is seven, which is the most occurring. Read out that 10, how much you all understand that concept? Read out that 10, how much you understand that concept? And let me go on. So maybe you'll come up, you came across some questions like that, and that's that's how to do it. The bag of shows the preferred chocolate bar of 32 students. Complete 10 out of 10. Complete the bag of to show the number of students who prefer the Twix bar. Okay, well, we have 32 students and we have 11 so far with Pinola. Hey, you know how long I, I ain't here about Pinola, boy? Uh, I never really liked Pinola that much. Seven is, what is that, Milky Way? Milky Way and Catch is a good thing, though. 11, 7, and 5. That looks like a familiar thing to add up. This is like 7 and 5 is 12. Because this is one more than 6 and this is one less than 6. So 7 and 5 is 12. I know 7 and 5 is 12 all the time. So this is 12 and 11. And 12 and 12 is 24, so 12 and 11 must be 23. So that's why I would add that up quickly in my mind. 
So no, since I'm on 23 and I need to reach all the way to 32, it means I'm missing nine. So I need to come now, use my clear ruler, which I did not beat my dog with and is working properly and not dingy. And I come here and I draw my little bar graph and I walk away with my one mark. Nine, nine, lovely. Four fractions are given below. We have seven twelfths, one six, two thirds, and a quarter, which three of the fractions when added together result in a whole number. So we need to examine these fractions and see how we can squeeze out a whole number here. Well, this is this is like 25%. This is like 0 0.25. So I'll need three quarter again to make this happen. Where can I get three quarter? Is one six. Maybe I can try changing all of them out of 12 to see what happens. Seven twelve, six twelves. 9, 12, are you all understanding what's happening here? And uh, well, a quarter is the same as 3, 12. So now it's easy, which with three of these fractions add up to give me a whole number. Um, Nairi, you could get, you could get um, blocked there. Y'all do not spam so just write your question. Just write your question. Do it have no reason to write so, 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 a million times. All right, so we now on 21, right? Everything good? I'm just waiting to see if anyone has a question. Anyone has a question? All right, so people, let's put in the answers to the last one. Now, we need to get... We need to get a whole number, people. We need to get a whole number. How are we going to get a whole number? I'll talk about the handbooks and everything after, right? How are we going to get a whole number? I was thinking to try and get 12 out of 12 by adding 3 and 9, and I get 12. I need to add 3 numbers, so, oh, jeez. So maybe I can try adding 7, 6, and 9, and see if I'll reach all the way to 24, which will give me a whole number. Two-thirds is the same as... Not 9 out of 12, sorry. 3, 8, 8 out of 12, right? 8 out of 12. And 1, 6. So how can I add all of these to get a whole number, boy? How much is 6 and 8? 6 and 8. How much is 7 and 8 and 3? 7 and 8 and 3 works. Did I make a mistake? 1, 6 is 2 out of 12. I made a mistake with this 1, 6. 7, 12, 1, 6, 2, 2. I made two mistakes. This was supposed to be 9 out of 12, and this was supposed to be 2 out of 12. Uh, quarter is 3 out of 12. So everything I can get there. 6 into 12 is 2. 2 by 1 is 2. 3 into 12 is 4. 4 by 2 is 8. All right. Maybe I can get it now. 3. Yes. Now I can get it. So this was causing me to not get it. I had, instead of instead of putting two twelve, I put six out of 12. So two and three is five and seven is 12. All right. So two twelves, I'm just adding in numerators now. now. So I'm seeing that the two and the three would make five. And then if I add the seven, I will get my 12. I'll get my 12 out of 12. All right, you all agree with that? So therefore the fractions are 7, 12, 1, 6. I'm using the original fractions again, all right, and a quarter. So what was the technique I used here? I used LCM to get the lowest common denominator, lowest common multiple for all the denominators. And then I compared the numerator to see which sets of which sets will add up to give me 12. 2 and 8 gives me 10. And 3, that's more than 12. So to get 12, I use 3 and 7 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So that's why I know that these will add up to give me 12 out of 12, which is a whole number.
Now, in some cases, you could get a whole number, like 24 out of 12, which is 2. So I was looking for that just now because I wasn't seeing anything, but it was made a mistake. The one six supposed to be 2 out of 12. Cool, cool, cool. 24% can be written as 24 of 100 of 66. Uh, no, 24% of a number is 66. So 24 over 100, 24%. Which is 24 by 100 represents 66. And uh, what is the whole? How do you find the whole? You find the whole by doing an inversion. So we multiply by 100 over 24. 100 over 24. What's the number now? So, hmm. Three can, oh, me, six. Six can go into 24. Six can go into 24. Four times and six can go into 66 11 times what else four can go into 100 25 times and 11 by 25 is well 12 by 25 is like 400 12 12, 12 by 25 3, 3, 300 12 by 25 is 300 so 11 by 25 is 275 or what was what was the method for the so for multiplying by um, 25, multiply by 100 and divide by 4. But this is an overkill for that because we know 425s make 100. I, I'm trying to do it, do it in my mind, right? 425 makes a, make 100 and we have 11 25s here. 11 times 25. But it's like 4 by 25, then another 4 by 25, then a 3 by 25 to make up the 11. So this is 275. 275. Um, somebody is saying I'm wrong. Is it for this one? Watch which three fractions when added to get a result in a whole number. Two seventy-five here. I think that's correct. Did I write back the correct answer? Seven, twelve, one, sixth, and a quarter. All right, one six is two over twelve, seven twelve is seven over twelve, a quarter. Is three out of twelve. Um, so I don't know what they're saying wrong. Maybe maybe they are watching the lead, so they saw when I made the mistake here. All right, press the like button. If there's anything, we'll come back to that. If there was a mistake, we'll come back to it. Twenty three. Yeah, we're kind of slow. We're going slow today. Yeah, let's, let's speed it up. In 12 seater maxi taxis were hired to transport Mr. Springer's mathematics class on a field trip. Um, uh, if the total the transportation cost us $65 each, if the total cost of the transportation How many maxes we need? I see Najan is saying it's four. If the total, if the total cost of the transportation was three thousand one hundred twenty dollars, how many twelve seater maxes were hired? Well, transportation cost was sixty five dollars each. Hmm. So we need to see how much sixty five can go into there. We have three one two zero divided by. Is it 65 each student? I think it's 65 for each student. What y'all think is 65 for each student? They, they mean here 65 for each student. 12 seater maxis, otherwise we would have never told us about 12 seater maxis. 12 seater maxis were hired to transform Mr. Springer mathematics class. And Or is it 65 for each bus? I doubt it's 65 for each bus. What y'all think? Y'all think it's 65 for each maxi? And it costs us 65 for each maxi. Um, 
let me make it 65 for each student. If it's 65 for each maxi, well, you all know what to do. You just divide by that. But it should be 65 for each student. I think it's for seat, $65. How much are you paying to go on a field trip, boy? When was the last field trip you went on? How much are your parents pay for that? Yeah? So uh, let's work out what is the entire um, course of one maxi. So for one maxi, and it's a two-mark question. That's why I know it's most likely like that. One maxi will be 65 by 12. And can I multiply that on the side here? I'll get 65, and I'll get 130. 65 times 2 is 130. So I'll get 0, 0, 8, 7, 780. That's for one maxi. And if I need to find the how many maxis were hired, number of maxis, I would say the total transport cost divided by the 780. So this will quickly cancel, cancel. Maybe I'm not seeing anything that can divide here. So I may say, I may say um, two. So you can go into seven, three times remainder one, and I get 39 here. 39 means maybe a 13 happening here somewhere. You know? Maybe a 13 happening here somewhere. And then what, what, what did I divide by two? Two can go into this one, then five, then six. Is it 39 by four gives us 156? I think so. I think so. Let's just double check. 39 times 4. 4 nines are 36. Right across the tree. 4 trees are 12. Plus, yeah, 156, 39. So it's 4 maxi taxis. 4. Which is what a lot of people are saying. So uh, you, all, you all believe that you had um, 65 for each student. Do, 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 do. The population of Cedrus is 3,500 people. 62% of the population are adults. 60% of the adults are men. How many women are there in Cedrus? Oh gosh, there are more men than women in Cedrus. Cedrus, uh, um, am I saying that properly? Anybody from Cedrus? And they say it like Cedrus? Cedrus? Hmm. Uh, the population of Cedrus is 3,500. 62% are adults. Um, how many women? So, if 60% are, are, are men, 40% are women. Uh, let's get how many adults we have. So, adults will be 62% of the population. So, 62% of 3,500. Zero, zero. So, it'll be cross, 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 cross. So, so far, the number of adults is 62 times 35, which I'll just leave it at 62 times 35 for now, but you all could probably work it out and tell me what that is. Um, and then, all right, I've seen requests to ban somebody here, but what's this I doing? Don't stop doing distracting things in the chat, please. And then 40% of this is women. So whatever this number is, and somebody's telling me that that number may be 1,400. Is it true? 1,400. Uh, let's see. 40%. So 40% are women. So 40%. Are, I, can, I can leave it as this. 40% of 62 times 35 whatever that number was, you can actually work it out like that as well. And see what will happen, just for kicks. And I can see maybe um, five could go into this, how many times? Seven times, five into this is two. You all follow me, and this is two. So two by seven is 14. So I have 62 by 14 in the end. Oh boy, so 62, eight, four, sixes are 24. What is the final answer? Eight, six, eight, eight hundred and sixty-eight women. Um, no, nobody I didn't get confirmation of what sixty-two times thirty-five is, but I didn't even need to find that out because I just write it back here whole. Fancy mathematics, boy. 
fancy mathematics. Okay, so that's the answer, 868. So make sure you understand that technique. 25, the volume of the box below is 576 cm cube. What is the length? Hmm. Hmm. So, so how do we do this? Well, we know the area of one face because we know the height is eight. You see, now eight across. So he could tell me too. So we know that one face is 32 cm squared, man. So to find the length that this face is dragged through, dragged through, we just need to divide it. So the length is going to be the area of the face divided by the volume for prisms. Now it's a prism. Um, and the volume was given to us at 576. If we divide that by 32, I feel something nice will happen when we do this. And I'm getting, I'm seeing people getting 18 because when 32 into 2 into 32 is is 16 though and two into this is two remainder one so that's eight remainder one 288 <sighs> still have more to go um 16 by 16 16 squared 256 and 16 and 16 yeah maybe it might be 18 maybe it might be 18 earlier so 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 far i have 288 divided by 16 so two Two can go into this eight times, and two can go into this. Why use two? Let's use four. Let's use four. Four can go into this four times, and four can go into 28, 72 times, and then four can go into 72, 18 times. Yes, 18. Great, 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 great. Some people say we're moving way too slow. That's good. That's good. So the product of two numbers is seven. One of them is four hundred, and let's say four hundred. Four and a, four and one twelve. What is the other number? So we have one number and we multiply it by four and one twelfth, and somehow we magically end up with seven. Well, if this is given to get the missing number, we need to divide. We need to say seven divided by four and one twelfth. This is not in a stage that we can do it in right now. So what we'll do is change this into improper fraction by saying 4 12 is a 48 plus 1 so this is 49 over 12 and it's still not ready for us yet what we'll do is reciprocate so we'll have 12 over 49 and the multiplication sign now we can see 7 going into 7 is 1 and 7 into 49 is 7 so so what we end up with is 12 over 7 and they ask what is the other number and i expect us to give them the other number and not an improper fraction form in mixed number form, just like how they have they gave us their number in mixed number form. So seven could go into 12. How many times seven could go into 12? One time remainder five. So this is one and five sevenths is the best answer there. 27. Maya drove one hour and 15 minutes to get to movie tongue at C3 Center. <clears throat> yes, no. Excuse me. Am I frozen? No, I'm still good. It's just taking a while. Just making sure. I'm just I just had to stop and deal with some spamming here, guys. Just give me one second. So uh, please avoid spamming. All right. There we go. I think we are about ready. Yeah, let me can the spammers making me lose a little lose a little time, but it's okay. 
um, permanently banning some of these spammers. All right, one more minute. This could have been like I get bummed from a bunch of spammers here. Very exciting stuff. This looks like a coordinated attack. When these spammers came out of a dark cave, I was like, charge. <laughs> so I'm fighting a whole battle here. There's a whole battle I'm fighting here, man. but I'm winning. All right, I think I think we see the end of this battle. Here. Yes. So what happened just now is that we had a bunch of spammers came out of the spamming cave, and they organized this time. Normally, these spammers will come once, one, 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 but they came together as a group. Maybe they had a WhatsApp group, and it was like, okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> The spammers and the spammers whole issue is that spammers does really touch grass like you see how some of y'all is going into one and play and thing when you touch the grass and you play football and cricket and run around and thing you does you doesn't feel the spam no more but when it go when you go years without touching grass you end up yes you end up just yes you can't control yourself you just turn into a spam all of a sudden so make sure and touch some grass people otherwise you'll become a spammer all right so maya drove one hour and 15 minutes to get to movie town at c3 she watched a movie that ran for two hours and 15 minutes oh good boy this question her real hours and minutes in it whilst at movie town maya spent 20 minutes on 20 minutes at concession to buy oh it's not if my retail room if i were what time did she leave home to go to the movie Okay, so we know the ending time. Well, yeah, these kind of time questions, I just read real fast to try to get to the end to see what's the point and then bring it back so I know how to read in context now. So now I need to add up all of these times. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, boy. This is time to return home, movie, time to drive, and time to eat snacks, buy snacks. So I guess all of these times none run on the same time. So I need to add them all up and then subtract it from 502. That's a real adding up there, boys. So that's an hour and 15 minutes plus two hours and 15 minutes plus an hour and seven minutes plus, you all seen what I'm doing here, plus 20 minutes. Not too bad, not too bad because this didn't go over 60, which is tangly, Lord. So 15 and 15 is 30. And seven so 27 so this is like 57 is that correct and now we have four four hours and 57 minutes in total four hours and 57 minutes let the subtracting begin so total in total she took four hours and 57 minutes and now i need to subtract that from the ending time which is five or two so minus the four hours and 57 minutes and let's see what happens so we cross this five, we have a four there, and we bring across this 60. So we have 62 minus 57. When I when when I have to do things like 62 minus 57, here's how my brain works, right? So 62 minus 57, instead of doing all of that and all that is I do really close to each other now. So I would say, okay, 57 plus 3 is 60, and then I need to add an additional two. So it this must be five. This just must be five. Y'all agree? Now, am I adding up properly? And um, four and four, so this is, I, I end up on zero here, which means I end up on 12. End up on zero, so I end up on 12. 12.05. I can double check it, you know, I can see 12.05 plus 12.05 plus the four hours and 57 minutes, I will end up back with my O2 here because I'll have 62. 
take the two and put it here. And now I'll bring across the one. And I'll have five and 12 is um, 17 or two, which is the same as five or two, yeah? Five or two. Now, this is a question. When I was watching the chat just now, when I was watching the chat just now, real people had the wrong answer. All they was watching the chat. Real people had the wrong answer just now. People are spinning all kind of weirdness. 105, 110, people are spinning real weirdness. So maybe this is a question to watch out for. See, not every student you also saw that. This is a question to watch out for. It had some mistakes popping up here. So let's put 12.05 and dust our hands. Well, this is 12.05, still in the PM. Still in the PM. Like people didn't know what to do when you had the four minus four. That was the thing. So you get zero, which means you're, you're on 12 in, in, in terms of the 12 o'clock. So it says zero, zero, oh, 005 or oh, 12. All right, so let's continue running along. Full speed, Mr. Prince rented the Holiday Villa at a rate of $780 per day for six days. He was required to pay a one-time cleaning fee equivalent to half of the daily rate. How much did it cost him altogether? So seven days. So in terms of the rent, in terms of the rent, the recurring cost was $780 every, every day. So seven, that's all right. this would be like expensive, but it's six by zero, zero. Six by eight is 48. Put back the four here. Um, six, seven, 42 plus four is 46. So is that the final answer? Ezekiel, what's up? Ezekiel and Patsy, y'all are saying a lot of sirs. Remember, if you have a question, just ask a question. Just ask a question instead of saying so. I, I read really, 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 really fast. So I see a lot of things. I know I know some of you all want us to go faster, but I, I kind of had to balance it. It's interesting because when we just started, everybody was like, we're going too fast, but now we're reaching to the sixth session. I'll just speed up. I'll just speed up day. Um, and then now we need half the daily read to clean. You all, the cleaning... The cleaning will be 700, everybody pay attention, 780 divided by 2. So 2 can go into 7, 3 times, you mean that 1, 390. So this is how much they pay, pay to clean the place. Well, not they, Mr. Prince. My name is Mr. Prince, yes? So let me see how much Mr. Prince need to shell out to rent this place for six days. Mr. Prince, I feel you could have used that money for something else, boy. Is it that you all get a, what, what you all getting? I am not getting... Six, I'm getting five. I'm getting five zero seven zero. Yes. Yes. People want to take water break and thing. Nah, let me go. Let me go. No water. <laughs> We're nearing the end. Calculate the total weight in kilograms of the two items shown below. How do they want us to express this answer, boy? Yeah, because that's what we really need to watch. We need to watch how do we need to express this answer. It's two point six. We want it in kilograms. So this is really 0 0.9 then, because we want it in kilograms. And 0 0.99 and 6 is uh, 15, minus 1, 3.5, 3.5 milligrams. That one is actually really easy. Really easy one. Draw the position, so 3.5, so we throw in longer 3.5 here. When the two items are placed on the scale simultaneously. So if we put the 3.5 kilograms there, what happens? The needle started off at zero. Sometimes in these questions, and sometimes with, the, with these questions in just a second, in CXC, I keep saying CXC, in SE, sometimes with these questions is that this, the, why I can't say what it is I'm trying to say, why? I am trying to say, <laughs> sometimes in these questions, the scale start, the, the needle starts off at a wrong point. You all know that? Sometimes in these questions, the needle, needle start off off. There's a, what we call a zero error. But in this case, it started off at zero. So we can just come straight over to between three and four to get the 3.5 exactly between three and four. And that's, that's where he's going to land. That's where he's going to... Well, if, if this was five off, well, then we need to give him a little five boost here and he'd end up on four. Yeah, boy. All right, so number 30. Last Saturday, Malachi, for a second, I thought that was Marshall, man. 
Marshall Aguin and CDS, decided to hike the waterfall. So uh, waterfall, he hiked up to the waterfall, boom. Right. He drove 0 0.56 of the distance until he reached the hiking trail and walked the rest. What fraction of the distance did he drive? Well, that's 56 out of 100, and that can simplify. We can see, um, this is looking like four could win it, eh? Well, it's smelling that four win into that. <laughs> that's, that's smelling like it have a four inside it. That's smelling like it have a factor of four inside it. Yes, sir. Four could go into this one. I mean, uh, yes, yes, yes. 14 times. And four could go into this 25 times. So this is 14 out of 25. 14 out of 25. 14 out of 25. All right, guys. So there's one tendency of primary school students. Stop. Let me show you this. I've been visiting a lot of primary schools recently. A lot. And talking to a lot of primary school students. And let me tell you a tendency of primary school students that you all have. And tell me if you see it in this chat. So... Um, it's, it's when a student is giving trouble, everybody in the class will say, say the student giving trouble, say the student giving trouble, say the student giving trouble, say the student giving trouble. Or if one person say, sir, we going slow, we need to go faster. Everybody begins to say, sir, we need to go faster. 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 So let's go faster. Let's go faster. Or if somebody wants to go slower, so everybody begins to say, sir, let's go slower, sir, let's go slower. It's a tendency to follow the crowd. There's a tendency in primary school students, even in standard five, big standard five students, to follow the crowd. So you all, some students keep repeating things that you see everybody do. And the characteristic of a good leader is that they are not influenced by the crowd. So don't let the crowd influence you. There's a lot of influence going on with the crowd right now, the popular crowd. TikTok, there's a lot of influence going on. So try not, if you have to do anything that's influential, try to make it be good on what you stand for. You understand? Do not, my father used to say, do not be the tail. Do you know where the tail is? <laughs> Have you all ever seen where the tail is situated? You are not called to be the tail. You are not called to be wagging when people say you are the wag. Be the head and not the tail. You don't want to be the tail, right? Okay, if he lives 40 kilometers from the waterfall, what distance did he travel by foot? Well, guys, remember, he went, he drove this amount. So it means if he drove that amount, he walked, that's the remainder, he walked 14 out of 25. This man really hike so many kilometers. This man is a professional hiker. <laughs> 14 out of 25. It means he walked the remainder, which would be 25 out of 25 minus 14 out of 25. And I know most of you all can do this in your mind. Yes, it's 11 out of 25. So now that we know he walked 11, 25th of the journey, 11 out of 25 of the journey, we can say, in terms of distance, he walked in kilometers 11 out of 25 multiplied by 40 over 1. You all see that? That sounding good. It's sounding like we might end up with some decimals here, boy, David, boy. So 25 into 25, 1. And four, I don't want to go 25, maybe I'll go five. Maybe I can consider this as 400. And 25 into eight, it will be four by four, 16, 1.6. And then multiply by 11. Anyway, anyway, I want to do it. Anyway, I want to do it. How, how should I do this? Like in between minds and what to do here. 11 25ths of 40, how should we get that? 11 25th of 40. Maybe I can say, maybe I can just do the fives. I can say five into this, uh, five, and five can go into this eight times and 11 minus. So I have 88 divided by five. And then I just divide that on the side. Is that what most people did? Five into 88. Yeah, that's something more reasonable. Five can go into eight. How much time, guys? 
five can go into eight one time remainder three and five can go into three eight, five seven that's thirty five seven times remainder three again yeah and five can go into thirty thirty three zero uh six times so seventeen point six seventeen point six kilometers sounds really good that sounds really good I like this question I don't know something about it I like. I don't know if it's the fact that this man hiking 17.6 kilometers. Like, wow. Let's go. A square and a rectangle not drawn to scale as shown below. The length of the one side of the square is half the length of the rectangle. So the length of one side of the square is half the length of the rectangle. Calculate the area of the square. Can you all get the answer to that? Well, let's call this the length. Uh, let's call this 7.5. The length of one side of the square is half the length of the rectangle. So 7.5 by 7.5. Hmm. Calculate the area of the square. Is it 7.5 by 7.5? Do, 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 Calculate the area of the square. 7.5 by 7.5. Seven fives are 35, put the three here. Seven sevens are 49 plus three is 52. All right, five fives are 25, plus the two here. Five sevens are 35 plus two is three seven. And then we have five, two, one, six, five. How many points I need to bring back here, buddy? One, two, one, two, fifty six point two five. Is that what we're getting? Fifty six point two five. They just wanted we talk hot up. We had it some decimals there. They just wanted to hot up. We had it some decimals. See what? Let me move forward. Calculate the difference in perimeter of the two ships. Oh my gosh, I thought it done. When you think that the math's done, is more maths to come. 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 15, 15, 4. Hmm. How do we add up all of this and maybe subtract us, the, the, the tractors? Let's find the perimeter of the rectangle. So the rectangles peri. <laughs> the rectangles peri meta. Do, 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 is 15 and 15 and 4 and 4. 30 and 38. 38. And the squares peri. Where's Perry is hmm. decimals again 7.5 7.5 by the way if the chat is too distracting to you there's a way to mute the chat you can just mute the chat I know some of you all mute the chat and just focus on what I'm saying because what I'm saying is the real juice 7.5 7.5 is actually 15. here's what I think in my mind 7 and 7 is 14 right so a point five and a point five will make one. So seven point five and seven point five is fifteen. So fifteen and fifteen is thirty. The squares peri is thirty. So now, if we need to calculate the difference, what is the answer going to be? Thirty-eight minus thirty is equal to eight. <laughs> the way to mute the chat is not to write backslash mute chat, yeah, people. So don't do that. Um, the table below shows the number of practice tests completed by students in the Standard 5 classes over the course of one week at Edinburgh Government Primary School. Wow, it's how Edinburgh Government, Edinburgh Government Primary, get a shout out here, right? Big up anybody who from that school. Complete the table above. Hmm. Well, this is the total, and it's missing... It's missing a practice test day here. So I need to find out what's the sum of these individual parts here. And maybe subtract it from the total and I get the missings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm going to say so far we have 76 plus 68 plus 70 plus 72. Everyone's following. I'm adding up. I'm adding up now. So 2 and 8 is 10, and 6 is 16. Bring across the 1. This one, I will just 
sneak him in there. So he becomes a seven and have four sevens, which are 28. So I now have 286 practice tests so far, but 365 were done altogether. So missing is 365 minus 286. Excuse me, why I just do a little bringing across here. All right, so now we have 9 and 15 minus 8 is how much again? 7. So 79. 79. Zenessa is saying that that is correct. And I'll see I'll ever see Zenessa get anything wrong here since we start this. I'll ever see Zenessa get anything wrong? Never. So complete the table above. So, I know I write 79, but it's in 71 now. Tricks. Sarah agrees with me as well. Calculate, calculate the mean number of practice tests completed in one week. Or the average. Well, in one week, we had 365. And there were one, two, three, four, five days because Monday to Friday is five days. We knew that. So five could go into 36, seven times. I feel I do five by seven is 35, 400 times for this paper already. Sometimes our paper is coming and the same thing you multiply and I divide it for half the paper. Anyhow, and then you bring across the one. Five into 15 is three. Is it 73 is the mean? No, I always like to watch my means and see if it looking kind of meanish. Yeah, that mean looking like the mean meaning. I mean her meaning. Uh, 33. We get in long to the end now, people. We get in closer to the end. 35 light poles are placed along a road, a length of wire of 8.25 meters were used between each pair of poles to connect the light pole. What is the total length of the wire? Right. If you have two light poles, it's one space. If you have three light poles, it's two spaces. You all see that pattern? Four light poles. How many spaces? Yes, three spaces. Five light poles, count them. One, two, three, four, five light poles. That the road day. That the road. And light poles. And it are bush by the light poles. How many spaces in between five light poles? Probably light on the light pole because they're light pole. Right? How many spaces? Four. If you have five poles, you have four spaces. If you have 35 light poles, how many spaces do you think you need? Between the poles. So 35 poles means 34 spaces. So really, they want us to multiply 8.25 meters is the space between by 34. So 8.25 times 34 is a piece of multiplication here. And I'm um I would like to let this paper know that I am getting fed up of multiplying numbers right now. I need to take a, take a deep breath because I'm starting to talk to the paper. 3 by, five, 3 by 5 is 15, 1. 3 by 2 is 6 and 1 is 7. 3 by 8 is 24. When, when I start to get tired of multiplying, I start to multiply real fast. <laughs> 4 by 5 is 20. Put it to there. And 4 by 2 is 8 plus... 4 by 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10. But you can make mistakes when you're tired. 4 by 8 is 32, and 1 is 33. And let's see if I'm getting the same thing that everybody has here. 5, 0, 7, and 3, 0 again. Yeah. I'm bringing across this 1. I'm getting a big, fat 8, 2, 8, 0. And now I need to bring back this point. 1, 2 spaces. Boom. So 280.5 meters. I have been multiplying for a long time. I happen to be a professional at this multiplying business. So I hope you all catch the idea, though. The, this quiz, a question like this comes like once every two years. So you must know your way around these kind of distance space patterns. Whew, I was wondering when my breeder would have come. I find my breeder was taking long to come. All right. Now, this is, the, this is probably the trickiest one we do so far. But don't worry. We're ready for them. We're ready for them. After going through, you see, yeah, the kind of make, yeah, the kind of make it poop and the killer now, boy. The catching, I remember the technique where I draw the points, make sure it poop and the killer. And I trying to go the same distance across. So this went one, two, three squares. One, two, three squares. So I expect my next point to be right here. 
So I like to put the way to see his face. This is what the savior will save you from all kind of weirdness now, boy. Yeah. Because especially when they see they bring this this dialogue thing, this um this diagonal thing. I say dialogue. Diagonal this this one, this is the worst one, boy. Oh, oh. And then you could clearly see that it went like this. Yeah. So I could clearly see that this should be here, but I want to verify it because I don't want my eyes to deceive me. And then this one went up here. Did it? And then this come down here. Let me just count these squares. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's looking a little, it's looking a little weird, but it is correct. And since this one's so complicated, I'm gonna this one make me bring out my ruler boy earlier, boy. And I normally I doesn't bring out my ruler and then normally it's three-handed. But this one. This one calling for ruler. Zzz, do, 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 do. Any more vertical lines again? This one. Well, this line in too vertical, eh? Although well, this line wasn't too vertical, but that was a mistake in the paper. So this line should have been drawn a little more vertical here. Like, like this. Yeah. And then there was a vertical line here as well. Now let's do the hurries. Let's do the hurry. No, let's do the vertices. The vertical colors. You come down there like this. Um, is it that you just came straight across? Am I mixing this up? No, no, you didn't just came straight across. So you went from this one to this one. Yeah, boy, this is the most complicated one I had to do so far. For those of you all who were here from the first day, whoever make up this one was having a bad day, boy. <laughs> whoever make up this one was having a bad day. Gosh, boy. Let's hope the person who making up yours for exam didn't have a bad day when they made it up. Because, like, what is this? This is supposed to be the question to relax. But look what they have me doing. I have to actually whip all the ruler on this one. Okay, and yes, and yeah, yeah, but whoever make up this question like they're just dealing with 400 spammers, <laughs> like they are just dealing with about 400 spammers when they come up with this question. They now come out of fighting these spammers, or like maybe they didn't win a spammer, or dun 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 dun. Right, that is we day. Never do that again, please. How are we looking? It's looking pretty good though. It looking pretty good. I'm proud of this one. I'm really proud of this one. 35, a certain number, a certain number square, a certain number squared, past tense, so squared the number, you have to square it, plus 8 gives the same result as half the product of 24 and 12. Way the same person who make up this question, make up that last question, because what is this? <laughs> we need to break this one down. We need to break this one down. Half the product of 24 and 22. So it needs to be equal to half the product of that, whatever this is. You see this? Let me deal with this part here first. Only just give me a second. Let me deal with that part yes, there first, right? So listen up, everybody. The product of 24 and 22. Anytime you have to divide a number with two of the same digits, use that one and the underneath. Because here's what you'll do. You'll see 2 by that is 8, and 2 by that is 48. And you see, once you get this here, you can just shift it and put it back there because you know you're dealing with the same digit again. I surely know that shortcut. Surely know that shortcut because I'll just find shortcut real fast. 12, 1, 5, 28, right? But you want half the product. Now, I remember product is the word we use for multiply, right? That's why I multiply these two numbers. And if I want half the product, half of 528, this paper is starting to get hard, boy. 2 into 5 is 2, 1, 6, 4. 264. Right. Okay. We have that part sorted out now. Let's go back to the first part. A certain number squared, so some mystery number, we square it, and then we add it, and all of a sudden we get 264. I think... I think we need to subtract the 8 first. So we can see why is this square the number. So if I say 264 and I subtract 8, I get 256. I can do that in my mind, man. I can do that in my mind. 
and 256 ringing a bell. It ringing a square bell. 15 squared is 225. 16 squared is 256. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now calculate the size of the angle marked X in the triangle shown below. Well, you see U and U is the same U's. Botal is the same thing because it's a big old isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle, the base angles are equal. So what I'll need to do is say 180, take away that angle up top, the up tops. And um, let's write it this way. To find the, the sum of the remaining two angles, and I'll get 136, guys. You see, once I take down 136, these two have to add up to 136. So now I can see this X. Mm, I'm doing a little algebra here on them, boy. This X is 2 into 136. 2 into 30. I'm going to zoom in there because I'm feeling like I'm losing my bearings. 2 into 1 is 0, and 2 into 13 is 6. Remember that 1, 2 into 16 is 68. It's 68 degrees, Alega. 68 degrees. And just like that, we don't, we don't. We in the finals. We in the finals. It takes good energy to sit down and do an entire math sweep. I know. Not everybody could do that. Some people is tap out. How many of you all could do a whole paper in one sitting? It should be everybody, but some, some students still can't make. They can't make a whole paper. From the time they're reaching the 30s, they're like, Mommy, I have a headache, I'm hungry, I'm tired, my foot hurting, my hand hurting, my head hurting, I need water, I'm thirsty, I need to go and play, I think. So say you need to play too. <laughs> the excuses start to pile out. Malik bought some muffins and croissants. I hope I'm pronouncing this properly. Sorry to all the French people. A muffin costs... 550 and the croissant costs uh five dollars. Uh he bought four times as many muffins as croissants. The muffins cost sixty-eight dollars more than the croissants. Where is this boy? How many muffins did Malik buy? Four max Malik. I feel you had a record of yourself. <laughs> Let's see. Malik bought some muffins and croissants. A muffin costs five fifty. Croissant costs five dollars. He bought four times as many. No offense, as croissant. <sighs> like peace. All right, so this is the muffs. They call that the M's. And this is the C, the croissants. You see, he bought four times as many. And I'm using my little box method here. How many of you all know the box method? As croissants, as the C's. I'm feeling good about that so far. So far, feeling so far, so good. So far, so good. And he bought four times as many more. So I kind of I kind of displayed this in my diagram nicely. And I'm feeling good. So that's good. Feeling good is good. The muffins cost $68 more. You see this part here? This is the key. That's why I drew in a key next to it. At the key. Why is that the key? Because it means this little extras here, them extra three muffin, the extra three. Bunches of muffin that he bought cost sixty-eight dollars. So three parts, uh, the three shares, or however you are custom labeling it, I'll use the word parts. Those three boxes in my box uh, uh, diagram, the three parts cost the sixty-eight dollars. The muffins cost. Hold on. Oh, no, that's not it. I read the question wrong. But it's actually even harder than that. The muffins cost $68 more than the croissants. Hmm, how to solve this without using algebra, boy? The muffins cost $68 more than the croissants. Um, Um, let me use algebra for a second and I can swing it back. Four times. Four. 
four times the number of muffins minus three times minus this x four times x times the cost of one muffin is 550 550 minus three uh the cost of this is five dollars by x is equal to 68. What kind of question is this boy? Box method may not work for this. I'll see if I can come up with a nice little box method for you all. So the cost of one muffin is 550. I have four times the number X, so four times the box, right? Four times the box. Because uh, I bought four times this number of muffins and croissants, and five times the number of, because uh, five dollars is for one croissant, five times the x. When I subtract the cost of the muffins and the x, I get sixty-eight dollars. Right. So, all right, four by five fifty, five fifty by four. Uh, four zero four five is doing twenty five is twenty five twenty five dollars does that make sense no twenty let me see four fives are twenty plus two so it's twenty two dollars twenty two dollars twenty two x minus 5x is equal to 68 um 22x minus 5x it's 22 minus 5 which is 17 17x is equal to 68. So x is equal to 4. How many muffins did he buy? He bought 4 times 4. 16 muffins. Number of muffins is equal to 4 times 4, which is 16. Anybody got this answer? Anybody got this answer? I need to think up of a nice way to teach this. Now, there's one question. Now, I can't duck this question because there's one time SEA brought a question similar to this, but I had a nice method for it. Was that the fidget spinners? I think it could have been the fidget spinners, the Domari and stuff, when SEA brought a question like this, and I have it on YouTube. Um, but you're not supposed to use the algebra method. You're supposed to use a box method or a fraction method to solve this. So it's a really rough question when they tie in money like this into unequal sharing. So, hmm. I need to figure out a way to get you to know how to remove that excess. I'll come back to this question. I'll come back to this question. Well, that's the answer, 16 muffins. <clears> Tia <throat> purchased some ingredients. Um, can you all give me the answers for this one? We have purchased some ingredients to prepare breakfast. Her, her family, her bill is shown below. Bacon, two. Well, she has two bacon. What do you mean by bacon? Like the, the one strip of bacon or the bacon pack? So you'll need to divide this by two. 47 divided by two. How many times can two go into 47? Is it 23.5? 
and three dollars and fifty cents, right? And eight eggs at three point two five eggs. Wow, them eggs and them eggs, them eggs, expensive eggs. Um, if the audio not playing, Kelly, don't know how to help you there. That's a problem on your computer, and you wouldn't be able to hear. This. So eight by twenty five. Is two and eight trees are 24. So this is 26. How much I'll get for this? 26. 26 dollars. I kind of speeding up the multiplication here. And 26 plus 42 plus 47. 26 plus 42 plus 47. So 42, 47, 26. Eight and eight and two. My mind still silently working out um, <laughs> the question from before. Nine and two, right? So one hundred in one one five one one five. So all of these questions is three marks. This is just addition and multiplication. We get a three marks there. The ingredient, the ingredients, not ingredients, but ingredients are adequate. Are adequate to make breakfast for five. Persons, how much will it cost here to prepare breakfast for eight persons? Well, if five persons is equal to $115 or represented by $115, one person is represented by 115 divided by five. Now, you see the word represented because I want you to be able to do it any kind of question that come like this. And then eight persons will be 115 divided by 5 when you multiply by 8. So this is the method. It's finding for 1, finding for unity, finding for the whole. And 5 can go into 115 how many times? 5 can go into this 2 times, 1, 23 times, 23 times. And all we need is 23 times 8, which is... So 8 times... 23 times 8 is how much, boy? 8 trees are 24. 2... 184. Why am I getting 204 in the chat? So I've seen some of you all put in some weird answers. 184. Okay, there's a bunch of 184 just land down there all of a sudden. So 184, yes. 184. That one was one mark. Eh? Second to last question. There are 375 um oranges in a box. Andre kept one third of the oranges for himself and gave his sister precious 40% of the oranges. The youngest sibling, Tristan, so it's three of them, then receives 0 0.90. Wait, they actually use fractions, percentage, and decimals in this. Uh, then we see 0 0.90, the remaining oranges. What fraction of the oranges did Tristan receive? Okay. So Andre kept, Andre kept one third. And after that, they remained two thirds. And gave his sister forty percent of the oranges. Oh no! Now, not of the remaining of the oranges themselves. So Andre had one third, and Precious had forty percent. Forty percent is the same as two fifths. Forty percent is the same as forty over hundred, and that can be broken down to two fifths. So I'm keeping everything in fractions now. Usa, take a deep breath, Ali. We're going good. Two fifths went to precious, one third went to Andre. Youngest sibling Tristan then receives 0 0.90, which is the same as 9 over 10 of the remaining. So let's find the remaining. So altogether, how much was how much went to the to Andre and Precious? Well, one third plus two fifths is none other than let's get the LCM. Three can go into 15. 5 times 5 by 1 is 5. 5 can go into 15. 3 times 3 by 2 is 6. 11 fifteenths of the apple of the, sorry, oranges, not apples, oranges. 11 fifteenths of the oranges went to Andrian Precious. So if 11 fifteenths went to Andrian Precious, the remainder was how much? Remainder had to have been 4 fifteenths. And what we are saying is that Tristan got 90% of the remainder. Tristan got 9 over 10 of, I get Tristan a last name, a last letter there, so I gave him Tristan. Tristan 
got 9 over 10 of 4 fifths. Of means multiply. 9 tenths, 4 fifteenths. 9 tenths of 4 fifteenths. So what can we do about this now? 3 into this is 3, 3 into this is 5, 2 into this is 2, 2 into this is 5. Guys, I don't know about you all, but I am getting 6 over 25. Are we getting that? Anybody get that yet? Let's double check. Now, they didn't ask how much of it are you receiving. That's what fraction of the oranges you receive. I seem like people pay the answer. Yeah, so what fraction? I seen people put maybe they asked after how many oranges, or they asked that afterwards. Well, afterwards, we'll say, okay, fine. Six out of twenty-five multiplied by by the three hundred and seventy-five. And once again, we divide once again, we are called upon to divide by twenty-five. So I am seeing that 25 can go into 300. 3 by 4 is 12 times. And plus the additional 3 is 15 times. And now I just want 6 by 15 is 90 oranges. Is how much is it? There's a lot of oranges, just and what are you going to do with that? So let's do a double check because we are dealing with some weird fractions here, bro. Angie was wanted, precious was 40%, which is two fifths. We add them together and we got. We got 11 over 15. The remainder was 4 fifteenths, of which Tristan got 9 tenths of that. 9 tenths of 4 fifteenths is verified as 6 out of 25. So if Tristan got 6 25, 6 25, 6 out of 25 of the entire batch of oranges, he got 6 out of 25 by 375, which is 9 here. Hey, it have more parts to this question. And you think that the question done? There's more question to come. <laughs> if Tristan sold the oranges for four dollars each, how much money did he make? He made ninety times four. Thankfully, this part was easy. He made three hundred and sixty dollars. Three hundred and sixty dollars. That was a free one mark in the end, in the. A survey was conducted in Gasparillo. Who from Gasparillo to record the brands of cars owned by the restaurant? The information that was collected is represented in pictograph below. Oh my gosh. First time I see a key where the key is such a big number. Normally the key is before, or if, even if it's a big number, it would be like 100 or 200. It's a weird number, boy. Okay, fine. How many cars are recorded in this survey? In this paper, I never do so much multiplication in my life, boy. This is real multiplication. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... You all know what I'm doing, right? I'm counting up all the number of cars. And since each car represents a 32 cars, I will say 32 by 16, which is 256 times 2, which is what? 512 cars. I see somebody put a real fast. In. Uh, yes, it's 512 cars. 512. So you all did the multiplication in my mind because remember, we just thought, we just mentioned that 16 squared. It's 256, and 32 is really secretly 16 by 2. So I did 16 by 16, get the 256, multiply by 2, and get the 512. That's how I do it in my mind earlier. That's how I do it in my mind. 512 cars. Of course, you could go through the multiplication as well in the long way. What is the difference between the most popular and least popular brand of car? Well, the most popular is the Kia down there, boy. So it's really that the difference there. Oh, no, the least popular. The least popular is the Nissan, which is not true. It's a real Nissan on the road. But anyhow, so how much cars is that? That's four 32s. The difference between the most popular and least popular, trying to make sure I read more questions properly these days, is 32 times four. And the class is telling me that 32 times four is 128. Oh, yes. Last one. Last one earlier. Last one there earlier. Last one there. Express the number of Toyota cars as a percentage of the total number of cars recorded in the survey. Toyota cars, by Toyota cars, what we know them, Toyota cars. Toyota is one, two, three, four. Um, you know what? I don't need to bother with the 32s anymore. I can just say there are 16 cars. 
and there are four Toyotas, so it's four out of 16. It's a, it's a fraction, so I don't need to multiply by 32, and just to get end up. So it's four out of 16. <clears throat> and everybody and their grandmother, and the dog, and the auntie, and, and your cat, and your parrot, and your little brother, and your little sister, everybody know four out of 16 as a percent is 25 percent yes sir and just like that we finish at least we've had one discrepancy in it which was this tough unequal sharing which is normally regarded as the hardest unequal sharing that could come eh? when unequal sharing is combined with excess with ratio and with money that's when we get little problems so the fidget spinner question from SEA was one that did that. I, I believe that was the fidget spinner with Omari or something like that. And I have the way that we that we do those style of questions on YouTube. But with this one, I had to pull out, I had to pull out my secondary school teacher I had to do this question. So what is this? Let me just take a quick look at it again. If not, I'll do it separately, right? So I bought some muffins and croissants, 550. Hmm, and oh, I need to get the X. I know I remember how to do it now. I need to get the excess here. The, the muffins is 50 cents more. It's 50 cents more. He bought four times as many muffins as croissants. Um, so four times as many. Um, right. What do I do with that excess? Uh, he bought four times as many. The muffins cost sixty eight more than the croissants. So I'll have to come back with this, but I know the is is removing the excess from the dollars itself. So it's fifty cents excess here, fifty cents by four two. Um, I just don't know the final step to show you how to do the block diagram. So let me just for those of y'all who want to know, want to just recap the algebraic method here that I used. Well, the muffins cost five fifty, and the croissants cost five dollars, and I had a certain number of croissants, and I had four times the number of um, muffins. So that's the equation I set up, and when I subtract them, I get sixty eight. So subtracting them, I get seventeen. 17 times the number of items is equal to 68 and 60 divided by 17 is 4. All right, this was probably the toughest paper that we did because of that question and some of the other questions at the ending. Maybe, yeah, maybe this was one of the toughest that we do, boy. One of the toughest that we do. So shout out yourself in the chat today. Let me see if I can select some shout outs. Just give me one minute to see if I can grab some shout outs. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. How is school going? Things getting hectic. Too busy. One minute, people. Half a minute again. Mm 
Shout out to the people who are waiting for the shout outs. Here comes the shout out now. Big up me, Grace. What's up, Grace? What's up, Brian? Chelsea, Lila, and she cousin. Terrin from a class. Big up. Brian, Curry, Kavir, Kavir, every week Kavir getting shout out. Alias Eatna. Kavir is mostly the most shouted out person in the face of the earth. Grace, Zeda, Kyla, Sadika, Rai, Ryan, 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 Ryan. Hmm. How will I pronounce this name, boy? Ryan, 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 or Ryan. Rian, 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 Rian. Jeremiah Clark, Jalon, Deshaun, Omari, Lisa, Elizabeth, Kelvin. Hey, Matthew, what's up? Why, Matthew? Why, Kyle? Um, Jalice, Judah, Chelsea, Ines, Jalon. Jalon, what is he seen by you being yourself? You're doing your work. Isabel, La. Isabella. Sharifa, Zarifa. Khalil Shabion. Shout out to the people from all the schools that I visited. Um, specifically, Akeem and Kelly. Kelly Cadell. Done. All right, maybe I'll just do a couple more, Nayola. I'll see you all next week. Kaylee, Natalia, and Zamora, and Celine, and Eli. Uh, so look out. We will be doing a session where we'll be doing fractions, and we'll be doing a session where we'll be doing unequal sharing coming up. These are some of the troublesome questions that I'll be bringing, so look out for that, right? Love and blessings, people. Love and blessings enjoy your sunday study don't follow the crowd you are the leader you are the head not the tail big up springfield hindu primary school one time <laughs>